welcome to uh, a pretty interesting time. Oh my gosh, Finn! One of my editors compiled a bunch of some of my best Cypher plays, and today we're gonna watch them, go over them, and I'm gonna just talk through my thought process as to what I'm thinking so that you can figure out how you can apply this to your gameplay, and if you think like a Radiant Cypher main yourself. If you're new to the channel here, subscribe. Here we go. Dude, on the TV, what a mode is this? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Mmm, ice cream, so good. Did you just snort? I mean, this goes here. Let's see. All right, we, we a... trip mid, which is really nice. Put another trip here for when they push out. Cage down, like it. We're gonna put my favorite cam again. That is one of my favorite cams in the game. Because if you stay on it before the round starts, let's see if I do that. Can I get a playlist? Yeah, I can switch my playlist. Damn, I'm terrible. What you want to do with this cam is stay on it before the round starts because then they don't hear the camera activate. And then most likely they won't clear it because they don't see it on map unless they are really looking for it. It's one of my favorite cams. And I'm going to go ahead and play... Let's see. Let's see where I play. Okay. So basically thought process here, obviously. I calmed right away as soon as I saw the omen flash. Like they're pushing B because you don't really throw that omen flash unless they're like at least... A couple people here. Got really lucky with Jet just dashing straight into my tripwire, which is super nice. Obviously, you just got to get off cam and kill Jet. But as soon as I kill Jet, I need to try to get to a slightly different position. Because otherwise, I'm most likely going to get flooded out with Util by either Sova or Raze or anyone else. So, I kill Jet. And then instead of staying here, I stay here for a second just to catch, on, catch somebody on cam to see if anyone's pushing immediately close. But then I use my cage to kind of like push out a little bit. Because Sova probably thought he was safe since Ray's also just pushed down lane. So caught him lacking. And then I also catch Omen lacking. This is just a good, you know, good headshot. And then died a Cypher. But 100% did my job there. This is one of my favorite setups on Haven. I have tripwires for long and short with cages up. Sometimes I move the tripwire from uh, short and put a second one on like the default plants. Sometimes I like to put the tripwire here as well instead of just in short. So I'll, I'll like actually double it up because then I, I'll play in heaven off of these trips and off the cam. So you jump off the off heaven, jump on truck here. And if you put this cam super high and stay on it for most of the round, you can get so much info out of it. We're like 40 seconds into the round. This is why I hate Cypher entirely. I have been on my camera for the entire 40 seconds. This is sadly the smartest way to play Cypher. I just sit on cam. If they didn't push any other sites, I should not get off cam because there's no reason for me to peek anywhere else and give up all my utility and information that I'm passively gaining while being on cam. Kind of sucks, but... I literally sat on cam for 40 seconds before anything happened. Fortunately, they went in my sight and we see Jet dash in updraft. I popped the cage right away so that I can swing. Uh, got off cam just at the right time to kill Jet, which is nice. Honestly, kind of lucky because they should have just been clearing me right away, but still did my job there. And then I know my position is now known to the rest of the team. So what I'm going to do is try to reposition with my cages already being up. Yeah, they try to spam me a little bit. My goal right now and what I'm thinking is I want to get to this corner, okay? I want to get to this corner or I want to leave and go CT. Those are my two options because if I stay in the same spot, I'm most likely going to get util dumped. They're going to push me together and I get I die and I can't really get too many kills. So I either need to reposition out or reposition aggressively. I chose aggressively and fortunately ran into my, K my tripwire, picked up another kill from that, and then... Astra should have known where I was a little bit more, but she's still focused on... I think she was in astral form, so she was put, throwing stars down when I shot Sova. Um, and then, you know, got lucky on the last kill. Just This is just a 1v1 at this point, so... But, so, I could have backed out, but I was feeling it. Got three kills, you know, might as well. Um, yeah, pretty solid setup and used pretty well. Just, like, basically, after I'm taking an engagement, I'm trying to reposition to either a defensive spot or an attacking spot so that I can get the most out of my utility and the most about, uh, out of my position, so. Do you like war? Well, good news. I'm here to tell you about Enlisted. Enlisted is a new kind of first-person shooter that uniquely couples PvP with PvE combat. You take command of a squad of customizable AI soldiers and fight in massive battles with hundreds of targets led by other players. Featuring multiple campaigns to play through, their own unique weapons, vehicles, and equipment from real historical battles, such as the outskirts of Moscow in 1949 to the heart of Berlin in 1945. There are over 100 weapons, tanks, and aircrafts to choose from, so you can really customize your playstyle to however you like. On top of that, Enlisted is really easy to get into for anyone of any skill level from FPS games. It has more realistic movement and a target-rich environment, so both casual and hardcore players will still play an important role on the battlefield. So play Enlisted now for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox using the link in the description below. If you use my link to sign up, you get a free bonus pack 
pack that includes multiple weapons, soldiers, and a premium account, so sign up now. Apologies in advance, because I'm talking about the most random stuff in this clip, but uh, I throw a tripwire for market on Sunset here. Cheese opinion, but it's the one I have. And I throw another tripwire on main here. I like cheese on things and cooked. Okay, if cheese is raw, it's disgusting. I can't do it. They use Skyle here, obviously. Thing like that. Uh, <laughs> gosh, I can't think. I can't think about all this cheese, man. All right, they use Skyle here. They're doing a fast B execute. I still have my market tripwire up. They haven't broken that yet. Obviously, it's super quick into the round, so they have. I just like maintain that control. I go for an aggressive play here because I'm freaking match MVP. I'm thinking, okay, aggress aggression is the move. So because they use Skyle, Skyle doesn't didn't break the tripwire, which means they're probably not gonna use Sky Dog. Normally in this situation, they would dog and break the tripwire, but instead they didn't. So I'm most likely gonna get a free kill off of this. I break the ult. Boom. Sky hits the tripwire instead of a dog, which is very nice for me. Free kill through the smoke, and then. I popped my cage as I broke the uh, the cabbage, the sky ult, and my cage is still up. So I know I'm going to be covered from most angles when I swing out of the smoke. So, boom, I kill one. I should have been instantly traded by this omen here, but he didn't. He wasn't expecting that because it was like kind of a risky play to make. I got really lucky with a nice flick, and then Reyna's disconnected in main. She threw a flash like two seconds ago, so I'm not exactly sure what happened. But yeah, it was a nice 4k and stuff. Definitely should have been instant traded out by that omen. Like, I probably would have killed Cypher no matter what. Again, it's the same mentality as I get one and I either need to make a make a decision. I'm either going to go in on it or I'm going to back out and then play the numbers. Nine times out of ten, it's going to be better to play back and play with numbers. But I'm a content creator and I like going for clips and plays. So I make the wrong decision most of the time. <laughs> but it doesn't mean you can't do that and still be successful. This... Yeah, see, clearly that was, like, the most skillful Cypher gameplay I've ever seen. Um, I could totally explain that. Oh, yes! So I found a better way to throw this cam since I, I found this. This is actually when I found this cam here. But basically, you can throw a cam right there. <laughs> and you can actually see a main. I've gotten better at throwing this cam, and you can see a main much clearer. This cam is insanely overpowered until until people start breaking it insta on defense this is like one of the best cams in the game because they i don't believe they see it on minimap unless they're like really looking for it which is which is just wild so you see a main every single round as it starts so you can you out the amount of information you get from this camera is more valuable than pretty much all of your tripwires which is insane unless they start breaking the camera right away this gives you so much info that you pretty much need to only have like one person A and then just play off the cam and then have the mid person rotate to A if you see anyone on cam. Until that happens, you can have one A and four on the rest of the uh, the rest of the map, which is just so, so good for Sunset. I can fully see main right here. So we see, cam, I just look at that. We just saw I, it's a main, it's a main. four people push through here. And again, if you stand just on the edge of that box there when you throw the cam, you can just jump throw it and get into a better spot and even see deeper into A main and see fully. You can count how many people walk in. That way you know if somebody's lurking or not lurking. You can go, oh, five people are there. Nobody's lurking. We should flank. Or, oh, four people are there. One person's lurking. We should be like be cautious of our flanks here, you know? So, I didn't even throw tripwires this round. Uh, I, I should have, most likely. But... I was focused on throwing that cam that I had just discovered. So also a good cam for sight. You can also see sight, which is kind of, <laughs> this is just a really busted cam. <laughs> All right. Nice little clear and kill. Nice little headshot. Use my ults. And we just win our gunfights there. Let's go. But Again, that whole round is won purely off of how good that cam is because it gave us so much information at the beginning of the round. Everyone just rotated. We know all five of them are there. Boom. Game. All right, boom. We have an interesting setup here. This is not one I would do very often, but if we look at the map here, I, ha I just threw a trip bottom mid, which is not really a place you commonly trip. So I tripped behind my team. I assume the reason I'm doing this is because they probably have flanked us a ton. This is what my like reaction would be. To if we're getting flanked a ton, and I need to I need to make sure that we're not getting screwed. So I cover my team's flank with one tripwire. I cover my own flank with one tripwire. 
Because basically, if they flanked through our spawn here in the map, um, there's no reason they would go here and not push main. So if they went through our spawn and then went to market and killed me or wh wherever I am in this map, uh, that's just insane. That just would almost never happen because they're going to go to site. So I don't really have to worry about that flank. So I put my other tripwire instead behind me in mid in case they pushed out of a mid and then pushed through mid. So this just allows me to give, give the team so much information on flanks while they take site. And let's see what happens. Oh, one way to... Yeah, I'm a late lurking in. So boom, that tripwire is down. I know somebody's in mid, which is nice. That's really good info for me. Since he didn't push through, I figure he's still in mid. Pick up a nice little kill on him. Use my ults. And we get tons of info on that. One more, one more. I got a flank on, on Phoenix, just chill. They most likely expect me from here because I'm either going to come at main or exactly where I came from there. Pick up a nice free kill. Use my cage. They're not going to stick it here. Maybe they are. <laughs> Throw a flash. Get on bomb. Boom. Oh, easy. Yeah, I mean, that's just playing post plant really well. Uh, mainly that Uto at the beginning of the round just gave me enough information to know if they were lurking. And then we got that free kill in mid and rotated off of it accordingly. And then just, yeah, just played post plant really well. In that situation in a 1v1, with that much time left on the clock, th there's like such a low chance of them actually sticking the bomb. So uh, it was a little bit of a risk, but not really that big of a risk because who sticks in that situation? All right, little breeze. So I have a tripwire on A main holding the A flank. And then I threw my second trip into elbow. That's pretty much what I do every time on, on B. Or if we're like going towards B at all. I throw a tripwire elbow and then have our A main flank covered. So that we can end pretty much any site and have the majority of our flanks covered. The only thing this doesn't cover, the tripwires I threw, uh, are if they push through mid or if they push through B main. So these two tripwires give you a ton of just passive info and map control. So... Mid. Boom! Jet was mid as well. Caught him lacking. We're gonna try to wait here as long as we can for the Viper who pushes out and then Jets flanking through main. So that was just good like awareness and positioning of like where they could be on the map. Like I said, the only places they could push through were through mid or B main in order to get a flank on us. And since we didn't see Jet in mid again, they're either in their spawn or pushed up B main. So I just knew where to look at the right times. All right, so we're up 7-1 in this round, or in this map. So we can play pretty aggressive, but I want you to just take note of how much control I'm getting with not a ton of utility. I threw a tripwire on A main, and we have some teammates pushing B, so I don't really need a trip, anything else, um, right now at least. So we go ahead and push through mid. I use my cam to clear out vent, which not a lot of people do. It's a really good way to just clear this out because then I know, okay, there's no one immediately here. We can push B heaven really safely versus like throwing a cage or a smoke. They could easily be in that and then instantly flank us. So no reason to have that after that. So take it back. I should have right here. I throw it in a second because I realized I should do it. I should have right here after throwing that cam thrown the tripwire and vent, but I push in with my team, help them clear for a second. And then I go back and throw the trip. I should have done it right away because they didn't really need help. We have two people here. Um, another part that happens here. Cage pops. We instantly hear somebody in the cage. Right there. So I, as soon as I hear one cage like pop, I, I'm going to turn over to the cage. So we kill the sage. Omen happens to be in there as well. And then a nice 2v1 on the raise, which is solid. And that's about it for the utility of Cypher for this round. But... Just playing off of all the information you get and just knowing where to look at the right time is really important. Oh, yeah. One thing I always forget to take my cam back if I don't think I'll need it again. Yeah, absolutely. So like right there, if say we lost that 2v1 to raise and we lose another player and our KO's down on site, I'm probably going to need that cam because our KO's going to die. I'm not going to be able to res him. So I'd probably go plant bomb and then play with my cam. So having that piece of utility back could be the difference in the round, which is insane. All right, well, that is it. 
to give you guys a little bit of insight in my mind and what I'm thinking about in the middle of the rounds if it's not cheese. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. And if you want to see more content like this, you want to see me break down some of my more, more of my plays and get way more into detail, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear uh, what you guys think about this content. So, thank you so much. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Don't forget to play enlisted by clicking the link in the description below. You'll receive a free bonus pack that includes multiple weapons, soldiers, and a premium account. It's available on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, so go check it out. And thank you so much to Enlisted for sponsoring this video.